And I need to inject something here, guys. So Dr. Walsh is running a nonprofit. This isn't something that he's selling. He's training people how to do this and making a fortune doing it. No, this is, this is the anti-pharma. It's the big problem, the pharma industry. Essentially, the only way where they're able to make money is on billion-dollar drugs. Is that why people – I mean, why, why would some random guy like you, however many years ago, be able to figure this out when companies are making billions of dollars? Were they just not looking? It started innocently. Uh, up until the year 1965, uh, we sort of had a for Freudian approach to mental, mental health and mental functioning. And, and the thought was mainly that people had these problems because of life experiences. And so counseling and that sort of approach was number one. And then right around that time, science came to the fore and we learned that with careful experiments, they found out that, that really what was the main problem for these people was their neurotransmission and their receptors and, and, and the, 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 biology, the biology of the brain, not life experiences quite so much. They found out in, 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 for example, in adoption studies that identical twins separated at birth tended to have the same, the same uh, tendencies for depression or schizophrenia or behavior or autism. And, and so they learned that really it's brain chemistry and brain biology, not life experiences that was the main, the main issue. What, what, yes, a, a lousy uh, background and, and trauma, especially early on, can really mess up anyone. But the main issue is your inborn tendencies that have to do with chemistry. Uh, so that, that was 1965. Well, this was kind of hard to be a psychiatrist in 1966 because can you imagine spending eight years learning how to help people with mental problems and you'd learned all these psychodynamic and counseling tactics and then your profession comes to you and says, uh, sorry, but uh, everything we taught you is not really what you need to do. It's really, we need to change their, their, their brain chemistry and their, because of these chemical imbalances. Well, at that time, there are all these people who were desperately in need of help and the only thing they knew that could really impact the brain were medications. So it started innocently, and they were able to help a lot of people. It was okay until 1985, which is you know, a little more than 30 years ago, when they learned, no, it's not bad. It's really this thing called reuptake, and it has to do with sort of a complicated way in which um, uh, neurotransmitters make their way back to the original brain cell that they came from during, a, during when, when a brain cell fires. Uh, I don't want to get into the complexity of it, but anyway, uh, what happened is uh, since that time, there was an enormous amount of money and profit in this. There are probably 20 to $30 billion drugs. And so now you have these huge pharmacy companies that are making incredible amounts of money on these drugs, and, and they're always trying to find the next billion dollar drug. And I don't blame them. They have, they have shareholders, and they would like, they would like to maintain their profitability. The problem is they become such a huge behemoth. They, they don't seem to have nearly enough interest in what is wrong, what is causing these problems, and the neuroscience of what precisely is wrong, rather than developing, usually by trial and error, but to a large extent, drugs that can help some people and, and make their company billions of dollars. So it kind of now, it started innocently, and now it's, uh, and, and medications have helped millions of people. I've met depressed people who told me that, that they probably would have committed suicide if a drug hadn't helped them. However, it's, I, I think that as science advances and as our knowledge and our neuroscience advances, we'll, we'll learn how to fix these problems without drugs. The problem with psychiatric medications, you're putting a, a powerful foreign molecule in the brain. And these things are powerful and they change brain function and they, they have side effects. They automatically have side effects. Now, if you're lucky, the side effects might be mild and, and maybe the medication will be great for you. But it's not really science. It's more trial and error. You talk to almost any psychiatrist and they'll try one medication that they think is the most promising and they'll go to you know, a whole raft of others. If you talk to people with mental illness, uh, you probably find they're on four or five medications and they're still not doing really well. That's what I've normally found.